This video is a really important one for all of those new doctors that are joining us in the NHS in August. My name is Ollie. I'm an Academic Foundation Year 2 doctor working in the NHS in England. Today we're going to be talking about exception reporting and this is a relatively new system or a tool that allows you to flag off either work that you are doing or situations that you are encountering that differ from what is in your core working agreement. And I don't normally ask this, but please watch this video in its entirety through to the end, because these are things that I desperately, desperately wish I had been told before starting F1. And the most important bit of advice comes at the end, after you understand what exception reporting actually is. So basically, when things go wrong in either such a way that all of the things that are expected of you are not able to be done or unable to receive the benefits and protections from your contract that you should be receiving, then this is the appropriate time for an exception report. Some examples of things that you might exception report for include finishing late. So let's say you're supposed to finish at 5 p.m. and you leave work at 6 p.m. instead not able to attend teaching if you've got scheduled teaching at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday, but you're not able to attend it because the ward is too busy or there is an unwell patient that you need to attend to. Or another example might be missed breaks. You are not able to take breaks safely or your breaks are continuously interrupted such that you are not able to actually achieve your break period. So that's the first bit. The first part of the challenge is obviously knowing that you can exception report. There is a thing that exists as part of your contract designed to help you out in these situations. But, and perhaps more crucially, why is this important? Why do we bother? What does it actually achieve? And there are two really, really important answers to this. The first is that exception reporting is evidence that something is going not quite right in the department and evidence of the thing that is going wrong. So let's say you are not able to take your breaks. A body of evidence or a paper trail, as you would sometimes call it, is built up over days, weeks and months showing that these doctors are not able to take their break. This is evidence that all of you and ideally people outside of the system can look to and point at and go, look, there is a problem. There is clear documented evidence that has been submitted by proper pathways that something is going wrong. So if you are missing your breaks regularly, but you are failing to exception report, either because you're forgetting or you're choosing not to, or you're being pressured into not doing, then there is no evidence that exists that this is happening. There is no paper trail that can be put to an independent third party to say, look, something is going wrong and we have been doing our duty as trainees, as working doctors, to report it properly. And the second thing is that obviously exceptional reporting is a chance for things to be made right. If you've been staying late at work, finishing later than you're supposed to, particularly consistently, you may be offered toil or time off in lieu or payment for the extra hours that you've worked. So say you finish an hour late, every day for a week, Monday to Friday, you should have finished at 5 p.m., you finished at 6 p.m., Ideally, what would happen is you exception report and you would be offered more typically five hours back in lieu that you could take at a time when it's suitable to take or payment for five hours at your standard FY1 rate. And it's worth noting that with those cases, what ultimately happens is usually at the discretion of your clinical supervisor. So you could express a preference, I would prefer to be paid, or I would prefer time back in lieu, but this isn't up to you, this is up to your line manager, basically. So the next question is, how do I exception report? And that's a really important question, well done for asking. There is no standard way of doing this within the NHS, it is simply up to each trust and each employer to provide their doctors a way of doing that. Two of the really common examples include DRS4 and Allocate. These are just common systems that are in use. It doesn't really matter what the specifics are, but there has to be a way for all trainees to do this. That is what is incumbent on the trust. And whatever the portal or the system, whatever your trust chooses to do, all employees should receive training and information on how to use this system as part of their induction. If you do not receive this training or information, then chase up because you are owed. And also again, really importantly, I know I'm saying really importantly a lot, but this video is really important. You must submit an exception report as soon after the incident in question as is possible, ideally with in seven days within a maximum of 14 but it needs to be within that seven days 
if you want payment as a solution to your problem. And then the final thing to understand is that an exception report of any description will result in a review by your clinical supervisor, your line manager. Your clinical supervisor being the consultant or specialist doctor that is responsible for you as a foundation doctor and as a trainee, as well as the guardian of safe working, who is another named senior doctor that is independent of your department and training program, like a third party advocate that oversees all of these complaints and reports. Now this can make some people feel a bit intimidated because your boss will find out when you put in exception reports because whatever solution is offered it has to be approved by your line manager. Generally speaking people don't want to be seen as inconveniences, as rocking the boat or as trainees in trouble. They don't want to be seen to be causing problems or look like they're struggling. This intimidation and scariness can create imbalances in who is exception reporting within a department. Let's say for example that you have four new foundation doctors working in a very busy surgical department, say to have that many foundation doctors. They're working in a very busy and arguably unsafe department and they are always without fail every day finishing late one or two hours. If only one of those doctors exception reports, even if all of those four doctors are being uniformly affected, it can look a bit concerning for that one doctor who is continuously exception reporting they are doing the right thing, but because their colleagues are not exception reporting, it makes that trainee look a bit more like a trainee in trouble, like they need a bit more support. And not only that, but obviously if everyone is being affected by these bad conditions, but only 25% of the evidence is being submitted, then it makes a weaker case for bringing in change of any kind, because those three doctors are wrongly not exception reporting. They are, in my view, not doing their duty, which means that the one doctor who is doing their duty to try and get change is unfairly penalised. So to summarise, not only do you need to do it for yourself to ensure that either you're getting the appropriate hours back or getting paid, but you owe it to your colleagues as well because if your colleagues are doing it correctly and you're not, then it can have difficult consequences for your colleagues as well. You need to operate as a team in bad situations like this. Discuss it with each other first and decide uniformly what you're going to do. And of course, to round things off, it takes a long time to get change by building up this body of evidence. So even if you, as say the four collective of you, decide that you're not going to exception report for whatever reason, if you don't, it keeps things bad for the next rotation of doctors that come in after you. So it's not just you that you need to look after, it's not just your colleagues in the team that you need to look after, it's the doctors that come next that have no knowledge of the bad situation that is coming that you actually have a duty to look after, especially if they're going to be brand new F1s. So that's it, the video on exception reporting. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I will leave the links to any relevant reading and documentation and advice down below as well. Thanks very much guys, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.